Welcome to the Maranatha Bible Class with Bible teacher Bob Suriano. Hello folks, it's great to have you with us this morning. Uh, we are going to pick up with the book of Revelation. Uh, we're in chapter 9 today. So if you have your Bibles, if you'll open them with me to Revelation chapter 9, starting with verse 1. And I'll be reading this chapter from the King James Version. Uh, I, just, I just prefer it. Uh, I, just, I just like the way that the language flows and in uh, this particular chapter. So now I want you to understand as we begin to read this we're gonna hear uh, we're gonna see and hear a lot of symbolism a lot of uh, terminology here is used by the Apostle John to give a description of things that he has probably never seen before and he is going to say things uh, as as like onto the way he describes things. So I'm going to try to break this down the best that I can to help you to understand this. Uh, you know, the, the book of Revelation is not hard to understand. I think where a lot of people get into difficulty is when they read certain commentaries by certain individuals that have <clears throat> really taken the literal meaning from scripture and allegorized it or symbolized everything to mean something that it doesn't really uh, mean. And that can get very, very confusing. So it's like I've always taught, take everything that you read in scripture absolutely literal until you come to a particular passage or wording that can't be taken literal because it will be figurative language or it may be symbolic and there's a way to do all that and that will be for another class but we're going to pick up right here now in Revelation chapter 9 verse 1 this is what the Bible says and the fifth angel sounded now now you gotta remember we're, we've left the seals behind the seals are gone now we're into the trumpets and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven onto earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So let's stop right there. So what is this star that John seen fall from heaven? Is it a literal star? So when we go out, out on our front porch or our back porch, in the evening and we look up we see stars is it that type of star is it like we read in the previous chapters where we have a <clears throat> a great ball or a great mountain as a fire burning which we know is an asteroid well there's some keys here to, to help us interpret the passage the star that falls from heaven onto the earth and to him so now here there is a a word used to describe a person him so this star is referring to a person a created being and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit now the bottomless pit is not a good thing this is where uh, a lot of the fallen angels have been uh, put in, in these different compartments under the earth until judgment time 
the bottomless pit is something different from where those angels would be. But it's very, very important that we understand who who the star is in this passage. And there are certain scriptures. I'm going to read three different scriptures here to help you to understand this. First of all, I believe that this star <coughs> that this, the scripture is talking about here is Satan himself. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verses 12 through 13, this is what scripture says. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground. You were weakened, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the furthest sides of the north. So here's the in the book of Isaiah giving us a description of Satan's fall from heaven when he was cast out of heaven. And then Jesus said something very, very important in Luke chapter 10, verse 18. This is what Jesus said. I saw Satan falling uh, like lightning from heaven. So Jesus witnessed the fall of Satan. And in 2 Corinthians 11.14, this is a passage uh, most Christians need to take this passage extremely serious, especially as we move closer and closer to the Lord's return. This is what, what the Apostle Paul wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. So when you put scripture with scripture, we can get a better understanding of what we're, what's, uh, uh, what the meaning is here in the book of Revelation. So I believe that the star that fell from heaven is referring to Satan, and now he has the authority, the power uh, over the earth to a degree, as God allows him to have it, and he has a key to what's called the bottomless pit. Now let's continue on with verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit. So this was shut closed. It needed a key to open. Okay. And there arose smoke out of the pit. As the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So now as the pit is opened, that area is going to be filled with smoke and darkness. Uh, and this means that uh, something is, is about to come out of the pit. Verse 3, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Now you got to remember, in this part of uh, the world, in Asia Minor, there, there are uh, locusts there that are mentioned in the Bible. And these locusts, when they would travel from one area to another to devour crops, <clears throat> there was no leader, but yet they would still all conform and go in the same direction. Now something very specific is going to be said here. <clears throat> and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. So now these particular locusts, uh, and that's what they appeared to be, we're going to have the power that a, lo uh, that a scorpion would have. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, or any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So here's another scripture where, where it talks to us about that when we belong to Christ, when we belong to God, God seals us. And there's a, an identification that we can't say, because this goes more into a different realm, if, if that's the correct word to use, where uh, spirits, demonic spirits, would be able to see that. And they can't touch you. And if they were uh, to have permission, it would have to come from God that they could touch you to a certain point but never kill you. So you go to the book of Job and you can understand 
how the demonic is given permission by God to do certain things to godly individuals or a godly individual and but was never allowed to kill him so Satan always has to ask permission to be able to do some of these things so here again these wicked ungodly locusts are unleashed from this pit and they come out to do great harm but not as normal locusts would do normal locusts would eat all your grass would eat all your shrubs all the greenery and they would devour all the leaves off of a tree but these were only uh, brought forth to inflict pain on everyone who is not sealed by God and more importantly it's going to be those that uh, take the mark of the beast more than likely all right verse 5 and to them it was given that they should not kill them but that they should be tormented five months and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man now what the scripture does not say that these are are scorpions but it says that they have power and the capability to sting like a scorpion and I've never been stung by a scorpion and I praise the Lord for it but I do know a couple of individuals that have it didn't kill them but it was excruciating pain uh, probably pain that would be even uh, surpass the stinging of a hornet and a hornet really hurts but a scorpion I think is even a greater intensity of pain so these particular insects and I'm going to call them insects for the moment they will fly around and anyone who's not sealed by God they're going to sting them and torment them for a period of five months so you think about that now you're in your house your mail's delivered you want to walk out to the mailbox and as you walk out to the mailbox these things are going to attack you and sting you and cause you a great amount of pain you can't run from your garage to the car probably without getting stung by these uh, creatures it's going to be a, a terrible time for the people that are here on this earth that's why today is the day of salvation hallelujah all right now listen to what verse 6 says and in those days this is talking about a specific time this is during the tribulation period men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them now this is an interesting passage because this is telling us that <coughs> during this time that men will actually seek to die perhaps even try to commit suicide but they will not be able to kill themselves because they are going to continue to go through a horrible time now I can't explain all of that all I know is God is allowing this to take place and death will flee from individuals they will not be able to kill themselves they will not be able to die because they are going to suffer torment for their wickedness that they have committed against God verse 7 and the shapes of the locusts were like unto and here's we're getting a description they were like this unto horses prepared unto battle and on their heads were as if it were crowns of gold and their faces were the faces of men and their they had hair as of the hair of a woman and their teeth were like the teeth of lions and they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle now if you looked at certain locusts in certain parts of the country and I'm, I'm putting up pictures of large super super large uh, pictures of scorpions and uh, locusts they're, they're enormous and they're frightful just to look at just like that but if you look closely at the locusts it would appear that they have all these things uh, but now here here's something I want to bring to your attention so these particular verses here 
there are some uh, Bible teachers that believe that this refers to modern day weaponry like helicopters and stuff like that. I don't personally believe that. I, I, again, I take this literal. I think that this is a description of a demonic spirit that transforms itself into a locust and brings great harm. And the reason for that is uh, the, the scripture that I read in 2 Corinthians that Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And then if you continue reading that passage, it, passage, it talks about even as, as ministers can transform them, themselves uh, into uh, the apostles of Christ and false apostles and, and, and so forth. So demons have the capability of transforming themselves into different appearances so we can see different images. And that is what I believe is taking place here is that these are some wicked fallen angels that have fallen with Lucifer. You got to remember the Bible tells us that a third of the angels rebelled against God with Satan and were cast down to the earth. And I believe that these were some of the most wicked ones, and they're going to be unleashed for a period, for a season, to do great harm and to cause men uh, to, con to continue to transgress against the Lord. Now, in verse 10, it says this, And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there, and there were sting stings, in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Verse 11, and they had a king over them. Now remember, locusts don't have a leader or a king. They, they, they synchronize and they all go together, but there's not literally a, one leader over all locusts when they attack a, an area to eat the grass. Here, there's a king over them, which is the angel Okay, now it tells us that this is an angel, but it's a fallen angel of the bottomless pit. So that tells us that, and I believe, that those are all fallen angels that come out of the pit. <clears throat> and this particular one, that's the king over them, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is uh, Ab Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, uh, hath his name Apollyon. So this is the name of the leader over these fallen angels under Satan. So I believe that it's very possible that this is the second fallen angel uh, under Satan. Could be, I don't know that for sure, but he's definitely a king, a leader. So he had a high ranking of authority under Satan's uh, um, captain, so to speak, or his army of fallen angels. Now, verse 12 says this, One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes, two more woes hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. So the sixth angel sounds, and then there's a voice standing by the altar that's in front of God in heaven saying to the sixth angel which has the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates all right now here folks this i want you to hear what i'm saying here this is important because there are some recent um developments in this area where this is going to take place and I'll explain that here in just a second. But here again, we have four angels. They're fallen angels, which are bound. They are bound in the great river Euphrates. Verse 15 says, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, for a day, for a month, and a year, for to slay one-third part of men. So these four uh, fallen angels were prepared for a specific time in the Great Tribulation period to be loosed, and they are going to destroy 
one third of mankind. Now remember, we're talking about in modern day term, terminology today, we have close to 8 billion people. We already know from the very first and the beginning parts of the seals being broken, uh, 2 billion people have already died. Now a third of what's left over, which would be about 6 billion people, a third of that is going to be destroyed. So there's going to be a lot of people dying during this time. Now I will tell you that when it comes to the Euphrates River, this has been the, the lifeline for many of those countries to have that water, for drinking water, for bathroom water, uh, for everything, for electrical power and all of that kind of stuff. But suddenly over the last six months or so, maybe a little bit longer, the Euphrates River is, is dropping. It's, it's going down. And now they have found in certain places where it's almost completely dried up, they have found ancient civilizations <clears throat> that go back four, five, six thousand years that were pagan nations that practice all kinds of paganism and worship of false gods. They have found these runes now and they have also found, and this is the bizarre part, they have found these openings or these cave openings that um, have bars in them or some kind of uh, um, restraints to be able to get down into these caves. And there are, and again, I'm just sharing with you some things, and, and, and I don't know if all of this is 100% accurate, but I think it's very interesting. There are people that have been there, archaeologists, that say that as they've been uh, uh, digging and uh, excavating these archaeology sites, they hear coming from these caves, these openings into the earth, these hideous sounds and that even there's a recording that I'm gonna play here and and you can hear it and you can judge for yourself what is that sound and it's coming from some some part of the earth now is it possible that what we're reading here in Revelation that we're starting to see some of the fulfillment that is going to be taking place to cause what in the uh, 16th verse is actually going to happen. So let me read uh, uh, verse 16 here. It says this, And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. Alright, so we see that this particular number, this 200 million uh, army, 200 million person army, is going to be controlled by these demons, these fallen angels, and uh, this is what most people believe. I also believe it is China. Uh, they actually boast of having a 200 million man foot army plus everything else that they've got, and uh, I believe that that is what this is referring to, that um, China is going to get more aggressive and I think we're starting to see that now. We're in uh, March 2023, and we're starting to see China is now the, the, the country that, of course, North Korea goes to for support, and now even Russia is seeking support from China. That never would have taken place, you know, years ago, because Russia was a power, a superpower. China has been a superpower, and the United States has been a superpower. But now we're going to see that these demonic uh, angels are going to motivate China to march from China across the east to the west, and they will march across the Euphrates River, um, and then they will uh, destroy and cause a lot of damage. So I want to I read verses 17 through 21. This is what Scripture tells us. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of uh, jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were 
as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed. So by this massive demonic-powered army, a third of mankind will be killed by fire and by smoke and by brimstone. That, I believe, is referring to modern-day weaponry that they're going to be using to destroy uh, anyone that opposes them, which issued out of their mouths. For their power was in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them uh, they do hurt. Verse 20, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works of their hands. So even though people see all these things going on, millions of people dying, hideous demonic things taking place, men still will not repent. Verse, in verse 20 it says, And yet they repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. So here men have reverted back to worshiping idols and pagans and demonic, uh, I believe it's demonic statues. We see a rise today uh, here in America and really all over the world, the rise of the statue called Baphomet. It is a uh, half goat, half man figure that represents Satan. And we see a lot of people worshiping that statue. Uh, we see people worshiping other gods today that can't hear, can't see, can't talk, can't answer. They can't walk, they can't do anything. Uh, and I think people are going to revert back to this in a, a deeper, escalated way like it was back in the days before uh, Israel was destroyed uh, by the Babylonian Empire. So we're going to see more and more of that take place as we get closer and closer to the Lord's return. So, uh, verse 21, Neither repented they of their murders, nor their saucers, sorceries, nor their fornication, nor their theft. So now people are going to be murdering, they're going to be practicing sorcery, witchcraft, all kinds of occultic practices. They're going to be fornicating, unbelievable, and I think we see the rise of homosexuality, all these uh, non-transgender binary people are going to be so perverted, and, and, and it's going to get more ungodly and wicked and, and as far as sexual perversion and fornication like it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot nor their theft. Some people are going to be stealing from each other. It's going to be just like the days of Noah and Lot. Well, folks, that concludes chapter 9. I pray that this will bless you, will encourage you to uh, share the gospel with others, and not to be afraid or intimidated by studying the book of Revelation. Now, I, I would strongly suggest as you watch these videos that you have your Bibles open, that you write some notes, and you know, if you've, you hear something you haven't heard before, study on your own and ask the Lord to help you to comprehend and understand the book of Revelation. It's a great book. It's, it's, a, it's a book about future history that is going to take place on this planet. And I think every Christian ought to, ought to know the book and at least be able to give answers to people uh, if someone was to ask you, hey, what do you think about the book of Revelation? You should be intelligently uh, know enough that you should be able to, to answer those questions and witness to people. So until next time, God bless you. Have a great day and keep your eyes on Jesus. This 
is the Euphrates River in 2020. And this is the Euphrates River now. So why is this the most searched term for Christians right now? And what on earth is this bizarre discovery that locals have found? 